What do we do when the church calls us to be men? We can do one of two things. You either run away and you complain, but I want to have sex. I don't like that mean old church. I think I can have sex. Or you can say, the church calls me to this discipline. I have the power to create life. I am like, not equal to, but I have given to me by God the power to create life. What an awesome power. You know, the womb of the woman lays barren until the man provides the seed. Life begins with the man. I can think of this in terms of this is just all pleasure and all about me. Or I can think of it in terms of God has given me this power so that I can help produce the future citizens of heaven. I have to take this tremendous power and I have to discipline it so that I will be a better man, so that I will be what God has intended me to be. Now, many of us probably know guys who reject this idea of masculinity. They think being a man is going out having sex with as many chicks as you can on any given night as frequently as you want to. And somehow they think that makes them a man. No, it makes them a male, but it doesn't make them a man. So, when we're talking about what it is to be men, men sacrifice, men discipline themselves. They take control because in life, one of two ways will be the course. Either you will control your life or your life will control you. It's that easy. You take control because you have the power to do it as men or you just let circumstances crash in on you. All of a sudden, because you're a male, the next thing you know, the girl you were with last week or two weeks ago or last month all of a sudden is carrying your son. Oh, uh-oh. Uh, what do you mean you're pregnant? Well, what do you think I mean? Your son is inside me. Well, not only have you exercised a horrible choice there, but many men then go on to compound it and kill their son in abortion. Could you be a bigger failure as a man to murder your own son? To destroy the life of the woman that you used so you could have a five-minute thrill. The disciplined man, the man of God, doesn't do these things. It's not like the man of God doesn't want to have sex. It's not like that just disappears from him. But he knows the tremendous power that's there. He understands that his masculinity is not for himself. He has been given this masculinity to hold in trust for the sake of others. He kneels down in front of that masculinity in awe, almost fear realizing the great power that has been given him. And when he does that, then he is a man. He understands what manhood is. That it is not for his own sake, but for the sake of the other. And then he knows this is why God 
took on the flesh of a man so that he could sacrifice and use his body for the sake of the other. You know, in all of sacred scripture, our blessed Lord never once performs a miracle for himself. Never. Perfect example, Jesus is fasting, he gets baptized, he's baptized by John, he goes out into the desert, he's out there for 40 days and 40 nights. And in one of those great understatements in all of sacred scripture, we hear, and at the end of the 40 days, he was hungry. Yeah, I bet. 40 days, no food, I bet you're hungry. So the devil comes to him and says what? Hey, turn those stones into bread. What, what would have been the sin with that? You haven't eaten for 40 days. He certainly had the power to be able to do it. He was God. He can go, yep, boom, turn into a loaf of bread. But he doesn't. Because Satan comes and tries to ruin his manhood right at the end. Comes in there at the very last second and says, well, your 40 days are almost over. Here we go. So right now... You've done it for 39 days and 23 hours. That's really good. So who cares about this last hour? Go ahead. And Jesus says, no. I'm preparing myself for what I know is coming. I am disciplining myself now. I don't have the power I have for the good of me. I have it for the good of the other. And I will use every bit of this power when they are driving nails into my wrists on that cross. For the good of the other. So, men, let's get down to some brass tacks, shall we here? Do you have that expression here in the Philippines, brass tacks? Means get into the nitty gritty of the detail. So any ladies here, you might want to put your fingers in your ears now. We, men, because of how we are physically constituted, have great difficulties sometimes overcoming sexual urges. We think about sex a lot. Every time we see something that passes in front of our eyes, whether it's a billboard or a girl walking by, or something that happens on TV, or some preview of a movie, or whatever it is, where do our thoughts immediately go? We know where they go. And if you let your thoughts control you, you fail as a man. You have to have the discipline and the understanding to realize that that power in you that's going all over the place, when you see a temptation walk in front of you, you need to say no. And you need to look away. You are not allowed to take your power of creation that has been given to you get yourself all sexually stimulated, and then masturbate. You are misusing your power as a man. That is not given to you for your pleasure. It is given to you to share with your wife or future wife to bring new life into the world. You don't get to do that any more than Jesus gets to use his power to turn the stones into bread. You don't get to look after a woman and have sex with her in your mind. You need to have power over your eyes and look away when a temptation comes. Else you will remain boys. You may be a boy in a man's body, which is a very dangerous combination, but you will remain a boy in your emotions, 
in your psychology, in your spirituality, you will remain a boy. And we all were boys once, and we know what boys are all about. They are selfish little brats. Is there anything more self-centered on this earth than a little boy? Well, that's one thing when they're this tall and they're going, I want ice cream! But it's an entirely different thing when they're 20 and they're saying, I want sex! It's a big difference. Ice cream, they might get a little fat. Sex, they might get a little pregnant. And then they become fathers. And now what happens to them? They're not prepared to be fathers. Everything that you need to do to make yourself a man, you need to do now. And let me tell you this, because of the condition of the world today, it's 20 times harder than it was when I was your age 30 years ago. It's just harder. It's more difficult. And it was more difficult for me than it was for my father. Because no one in the world was saying back in the 1940s, oh, just go ahead and have sex and that's all you need to worry about. Go have sex and sex and let's make movies and sex and do this and watch TV and sex and here's magazines and sex and you know me sex just some pictures and hey, look at this, like, look at this chick here. And, uh, never happened. But that's all you get today, right? You can nod your heads. I live in the same world, I know. The message you get is that your manhood depends on you having sex. That's it. Nothing could be a bigger lie. But it's easy to believe because you feel the physical urge about it. So it seems like it's right. It's why you have to be men of God. You will never be able to overcome these things if you remain a man of just yourself. You will never overcome sin and the devil on your own. It's not possible. The strongest man on earth can never overcome a demon on his own. It's not possible. And that's part of manhood. Realizing the limits of your strength. It's why God became a man to give us his power to overcome demons. He says to his disciples, to his apostles, I have given you power to tread on scorpions. Notice that. I have given you power, not on your own. Why do you have all this? So that you can be the fathers of the next citizens of heaven. That's it. That's it. Manhood has nothing to do with age, and it has nothing to do with biology. It has everything to do with the disposition of your soul and your spirit. You become a man by imitating the perfect man. And that's exactly what the church calls you to do in every area of your life. And since we're all about this tall and sex comes in, this is the first area you have got to control. Masturbation is a sin. Lusting after women, using them as objects in your mind is a sin. Not just for you, but you destroy your idea of the feminine. How can you think you're going to grow up and protect the feminine when in your mind you've done nothing except abuse it? You're not going to be a good husband. How could you possibly be a good husband when you look at the feminine and think of it in terms of just a play toy for you? It's just something you've entertained yourself with for, you know, 10, 15 years. And now you're going to marry it and protect it. You're going to marry it and protect it. You're going to marry it and abuse it. And when you're done, you'll divorce it. And you'll break up your family and your sons will be fatherless. And who will teach them to be men? See, it all starts right now. Right now. Control yourselves physically. Control yourselves in your discipline 
of everything, all those great powers you have as men, use them for the other, not for you. That's why they were given to you.